you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Live in the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, dream team? Coach D here coming at you with another growth mini-sode. This is going to be a bite-sized episode with the goal of setting a growth-minded intention and focus for the upcoming week. Each mini-sode is going to offer a quote that encapsulates the theme of the week. And after the quote, we're going to dive into a weekly focus, something small that we can focus on for the following seven days. As well as we're going to hit a physical activity tip and a nutritional tip that's going to help assist us in working toward a more healthy and optimal way of living our own dream life. And each mini-sode will end with a recommendation for the week. The recommendation could be anything from a podcast episode to listen to, a book to read, or anything that's going to help us better educate ourselves towards the overall focus of the week. If this is your first time listening to a mini-sode, the goal is to listen on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday to be ready to start the challenges of, of the week on Monday. Listen to one mini-sode every week, and as the week finishes, move on to the next week's mini-sode. You can start all the way over back at number one, or you can join in with the team right now on mini-sode number 10. These mini-sodes will only be as beneficial to you as you're willing to make them. So if you're playing along with the weekly focuses or the physical activity and nutrition tips, it's going to help you be much more successful to do this with someone in your life. So grab an accountability buddy and share on your social platforms the challenges of the week. You never know who is quietly watching and rooting for you. And you never know whose life you're going to inspire just by sharing your journey, both your challenges and your successes. So let's dive into this week's growth mini-sode. This week's quote comes from Steve Maraboli. And this quote says, The scale can only give you a numerical representation of your relationship to gravity. It cannot measure your beauty, talent, purpose, your strength, or your love. Don't give the scale more power than it's earned. So the weight scale in your house. The scale can only give you a numerical representation of your relationship to gravity. It can't measure beauty, talent, purpose, strength, or love. Don't give the scale more power than it's earned. When we stop putting the importance on the actual number and start directing our focus and efforts towards the real why we are trying to change our weight in the first place, then we may be able to alter our current daily habits and priorities towards a long-term lifestyle change. A lifestyle change that not only gets us to where our body composition goal is, but also allows us to live a happy, healthy, independent, long and fulfilled lifespan with the ones that we love. So moving on, this week's weekly focus is every day this week, send two people a message telling them how thankful you are for something that they've done or something that has affected you positively. Just someone that has impacted your life positively. Someone that you see frequently, so one person that you see frequently, and then one person that you see less often. Those should be the two people that you send messages to each day this week. Spread gratitude and positivity and notice what returns back to your life. There's just something really special about telling someone how much you appreciate them being in your life. However big or small your relationship is to you, and no matter if you've been, it's been years since you've talked to them or if it's just been minutes since you've last spoken with them. So consider a time you read a negative comment online, maybe on a hotbed topic that you were super passionate about. Um, think about how that made you feel, like your actual physical feelings. Your face gets red hot. Your muscles start to tense. You can literally feel the adrenaline starting to pump. And this is all from just a simple message that you read. Our mind is powerful. And the words we read and the things we see, they create chemistry in the body. Actual physiological change. Now consider a day where you wake up and you go to your phone and you look at your messages and you see that you have a message from an old friend or an old loved one. You open it up and you read a heartwarming message of how they appreciate you, how they love you, how they're grateful to have you in their lives. If we lived in a world where people started every single day with a feeling like that, we would all live in a much happier place. If people started their day off with love and gratitude and a feeling of community and purpose, 
they would spread that to the people that they encountered throughout the day. In turn, it's really interesting and and actually hopeful that the ripple effect of this happiness and kindness and and just goodwill what that could create simply by one person sending a thoughtful message and you never know your message could change someone's life it could be come at a time when they need it the most who knows the happiness that you create in your community after a few days of messages maybe might inspire the people that that you're sending messages to to do the same. And somehow, maybe in some way, this could return to add value back to your life. You never know. But even if nothing ever transpires back into your life, you will also start each day with that positive feeling that you just made someone's day a little bit brighter. So every day this week, send two messages, two different people, letting them know how you feel about them and how you're thankful for them. This week's physical activity tip has to do with the order of which you do either cardio endurance training or resistance weight training. All the time I get asked, should I do cardio first or should I start with the resistance training first? And and as with all things in fitness and nutrition, the answer is it depends on the person and it depends on their goal. However, there is a general rule that you will want to follow depending on what you're trying to prioritize as your main goal. So if your main goal is to lose body fat, the general consensus is to do resistance training first. Do the weights first. Now this may may seem counterintuitive to most, but that's only to the people that haven't listened to the previous masterclass episodes on body fat loss. Most people think that just jumping on a cardio machine and going after it for hours per week is the best way to lose body fat. Well, maybe in the short term, however, Heavy resistance training helps build the lean muscle mass on your body, which also helps to build your your metabolic daily burn or your BMR. So your BMR is your greatest source of automatic calorie burns. BMR, automatic, that's your greatest source. Therefore, cardio, if you do your cardio and you do it and you throw it in at the beginning of your weight loss journey, um, it's like getting paid on Friday and just putting it straight into your checking account. You're going to have short-term cash on hand or short-term weight loss. However, the long-term, you have now dropped your BMR to a lower calorie limit that usually isn't sustainable. And that money in your checking account, uh, it probably, you're losing it over time due to inflation and due to like zero interest that you're getting from a checking account. However, resistance training and building muscle is like putting your money in an early Amazon stock. Yeah, it's going to be slower short term, but that stock is going to grow exponentially. Same thing with more muscle. More muscle equals higher BMR, higher free automatic calories, and the more expensive calorie burning tissue that you're going to be putting on your body. So you're going to be making yourself a more metabolically inefficient calorie burning machine, which is what you want if your goal is body fat loss. The reason you do resistance training first for fat loss goals is when you do cardio first, you exhaust your body to be able to lift heavy weights later, you're not going to be able to create that overload. You're in turn sending that anabolic muscle signal when you lift weights, but if you can't trigger that anabolic signal because you're too tired from doing your cardio, then you're not doing what you need to do to get to your main goal. So knock out the weights first, and then you can give whatever you have left on the cardio stuff. Now, if your goal is to be faster then you got to do your cardio first. If you're looking to decrease your race times or you're looking to um, train for a test for maybe a mile or a military PT test, for example, make sure you train your specific cardio task first while you're fresh. This isn't if you're just looking to go out and run at an easy pace. This is if you're trying to get faster and you're really hitting those uncomfortable higher heart rate efforts, you're going to want to do your cardio first because it will utilize your anaerobic energy stores for faster speeds on the treadmill or the track that might have been used up during your strength work first, and especially if you hit a leg day. So if being faster is your main goal, prioritize your cardio and train specifically for what you're looking to get better at. The mile, do the mile. The 5K, do the 5K and then finish with whatever you have left on weights. And lastly, if you're looking to be stronger, 
then again, you're going to want to do strength first. And this is for the exact same reason as why you would do cardio first if you're looking for more speed. If you're looking to be stronger, you should be lifting heavy enough weights that you can only lift in a rep range of about three to eight reps per set. Three to eight, that's a very low rep count, especially for those of you that do group fitness classes. We rarely hit that rep range. Strength training is as much neurological as it is about the muscle size. You're training your central nervous system or your amplifier, like we've talked about in the past, to be able to lift heavier weights with your muscles or let's say your speakers in the amplifier situation. Make sure you lift heavy enough to send the signal that your current muscles are not strong enough to lift the weight that you're asking it to, which in turn is going to make your body send those muscle building signals so that the next time you encounter those heavy weights, your muscles will be able to to be rebuilt, more resilient, and stronger because of that strength training first. Then you can finish with your cardio. Now, even after saying all of that, there's a caveat here. Of course, there's a caveat. Your body is an adaptation machine. So the more that you do something the same, the more efficient it becomes at that thing. And the less benefits you're going to reap over time. So throwing in some variation really helps that adaptation. If your goal is body fat loss, you should do your strength training first for maybe three weeks and then change it up for a week so that you can help the body avoid adaptation. And then you can just repeat that cycle until you've attained your goal. And then you get to make a new goal to attack. So that's the physical activity tip. You want to prioritize which you do first, depending on whatever your fitness goal is. Moving on to this week's nutrition tip. Allow food to be in your mouth longer before swallowing. So think 30 to 40 chews. Yeah, that's a lot of chews. You're going to consume less calories. Your enzymes in the mouth will help aid in digestion. You will think more clearly and mindful about what you're eating and will help avoid the overconsumption or distracted eating that sometimes happens. Digestion starts in the mouth. The various parts of the mouth work in concert to digest the food that you eat. So let's say you walk downstairs and you smell this freshly cooked breakfast in the morning. Your mouth starts to water. Well, actually, it starts to salivate. When you smell food, the salivary glands release saliva, a fluid made of mostly water, but also proteins, mucus, minerals, and enzymes. Salivation is the first step in the digestive process. It prepares the mouth to be able to break down the food that it's about to eat. Saliva, a.k.a. spit, serves many functions, including the enzyme in it, salivary amylase. This breaks down food into a liquid form that makes it easier for the body to digest. Saliva also serves as an indicator of how well hydrated you are. If you got dry mouth, it's a signal that you may need more water. The saliva also prevents tooth decay by removing bacteria and dead cells from your mouth. Now you have 32 adult teeth that rip and chew your food apart. You have your three types of salivary glands in the cheek, on the floor of the mouth, and then widely dispersed under the tongue. Your teeth, your salivary glands, and even your tongue help facilitate digesting this food that you put in your mouth. And your mouth is responsible for two different types of digestion, mechanical and chemical. So mechanical is the actual physical process of breaking down the food by chewing. And chemical digestion is the process of breaking down food molecules through the chemical reactions, which is where the saliva and the salivary glands come into play. Now, all of these digestive reactions begin right there in your mouth. And most of us seem, well, very apt to make this an express step, me included. I'm one of the quickest eaters you'll ever meet. My dad, my dad says it's from um, our military training when I was young and then when I went to boot camp and just solidified it. So this is definitely something that I need to work on as well. But if you don't take advantage of the mechanical and the chemical digestive processes that the mouth have to offer, then it makes sense that you're asking something down the digestive track to pick up the slack. Maybe it's overtaxing the stomach acid, which could create backup leading to acid reflux or indigestion. Maybe it's the intestines where you could get some intestinal distress, some stomach pains, gas, bloating feelings, um, so this week, consider having a little more awareness as well as taking a little more advantage of the digestive processes that the mouth is designed to offer. Chew your food a little bit longer, 
and do not put the next bite of food in your mouth until the previous bite is completely chewed and completely swallowed. See if this helps you be a little more mindful when eating, as well as helps the body to tell when you're actually full and not just cramming the whole plate down your throat because you have to clean everything off in order for it to be done. And I'll raise my hand there because I'm definitely guilty of that. So lastly, we're going to go to this week's recommendation, and it's to listen to another podcast from the Model Health Show with Sean Stevenson. Yes, my favorite podcast. This episode is called Embracing Change and Gaining Emotional Agility with Dr. Susan David. So this is going to be episode number 185. It was released on November 8, 2016, an oldie but a goodie. Um, so again, Model Health Show with Sean Stevenson, Embracing Change and gaining emotional agility with Dr. Susan David. I'm going to include the link to this episode in the description of this podcast. So let me know if you have any hard time finding it, and I can send you the direct link. And that's it, my friends, for this week's Growth mini Each week, we're going to focus on something new and dial in a different aspect of physical activity and nutrition. Share with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. Post on your social media stories a screenshot of the thoughtful messages that you send, or just send your message via a post in your story and tag that person that you're thankful for. Post a video of you taking a little bit more time to eat and get those 30 to 40 chews per bite, or share your workouts and you doing the order of strength or cardio depending on whatever your fitness goal is. And make sure you tag me and share me in your journey. Let me know if you have any suggestions or tips that would help this Live in the Dream team that I can discuss on future episodes. And I'm going to be right here with you, friends, working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, keep living the dream.